Why do I make videos like this? Videos that show you how to irritate, how to aggravate, and how to alienate commander playgroups. Playgroups made up of your friends, your family, your Magic the Gathering community. Am I joking? Is this just an entertaining way to show off a cool deck tech or series of win cons and combos? Sure, if that's what gets you through the night. But the truth is I do these videos because you want me to. Oh sure, your soft, weak gut will guilt you into continuously claiming that you play Commander to have fun, that it is just a casual format to enjoy with friends, but deep down inside, you secretly desire to blow up mana bases, lock players out, and absolutely ruin your opponent's entire night. That is why I do videos like this because you know you want it. So with that being said, here's Mono Red Control, a deck so devious and disgusting that no one will realize what you are up to until it is too late. But of course, before we begin, another thing you secretly desire, relevant sponsored content. This video is brought to you by Cubamajigs Series 2 and the brand new Potamajigs, both of which are available via this limited time Kickstarter. Cubamajigs are reusable, resealable packaging for Magic the Gathering cards or other standard size gaming cards. Cubamajigs Series 2 arrive pre-made in a storage box. The storage box itself is great for holding cards, and you can hold your entire cube or perhaps just commander decks in the also now offered Potamajigs storage box. With over 30 pieces of gorgeous art to choose from for your Potamajigs or Cubamajigs, these accessories are the perfect pairing for anyone looking for resealable packs, or just a great storage spot for their commander decks. International shipping is of course available, so go to cubes2.com, that's C-U-B-E-S-2.com to find out more. Perfect for your collection of commanders, you know, your Narset deck, your Zozu the Punisher deck, your Zur the Enchanter deck, your Chulain Cheerios deck, your Karvek the Merciless deck, your Uriel the Miststalker deck your Grand Arbiter deck, your Vorinclex Super Jerks deck, and of course, your Simic deck. Oh, but that is only eight commanders. Let's talk about the ninth in that lineup. Stark of Wrath, Mono Red Control. Stark of Wrath is a Mono Red Control deck that uses very fair cards to create value engines that focus on using your opponent's resources against them. Unlike most red decks, A, this is control, and B, as such, is much more reliant on patience, cunning, and an understanding of card synergies and the stack. Its commander, Stark of Wrath, is a legendary human rogue for one generic and double red that reads, tap to destroy target artifact or creature. That permanence controller gains control of Stark of Wrath. This effect lasts indefinitely. This deck does things that people don't expect. Note that the controller of the permanent gains control of Stark. So if you target your own artifact or creature, then you get to regain control of Stark. Let's see how we can play with the stack. This process takes a few steps. To begin with, tap Stark to destroy your own Darksteel Citadel, an indestructible artifact land. With that still on the stack, untap Stark using either a Thousand Year Elixir or Mage Rite Stone. Then tap Stark again to destroy your opponent's creature or artifact. Your opponent's creature or artifact will be destroyed and they will gain control of Stark. Ah, but the destroy trigger for your Darksteel Citadel will then resolve, giving you back control of Stark. And of course, since Darksteel Citadel is indestructible, you've lost nothing in the process. Other good targets for Stark's ability are of course Darksteel Pendant and Darksteel Ingot. Though with this deck, don't be afraid to destroy your own stuff or just sacrifice Stark to avoid giving him away to an enemy. For example, we run Goblin Bombardment and Nim Death Mantle. Destroy an opponent's card, but then sacrifice Stark to Goblin Bombardment or Moren the Moaning Well. But don't send Stark to the command zone 
alone, let him hit the graveyard, and then reanimate him with the Nim Death Mantle. There are simpler ways to use Stark's ability and get him back before your opponents can make use of him, such as Homeward Path or Erratic Portal. Erratic Portal is great because opponents assume you are going to use it to bounce their creatures, but it's really here so you can use Stark's ability, then bounce him back to hand. Erratic Portal is extremely useful in this deck because many of our creatures have Enter the Battlefield effects, which include Inferno Titan for damage, Solemn Simulacrum for land drops, Dockside Extortionist because Dockside Extortionist, I mean for mana, or just exile creatures using Duplicant. You know, the problem children. When paired with Dire Fleet Daredevil, we are essentially casting a Snapcaster Mage for our opponent's graveyard. A big theme in the deck are creatures who can threaten your opponent's creatures or in other words, steal them. The deck wants to steal your opponent's creatures because in a deck as fair as this one, it behooves one to use your opponent's powerful or broken creatures against them. And of course, after we have taken temporary control of our opponent's creatures, we can kill them with Stark without losing control of Stark. To permanently gain control of an opponent's creature, we run either a Bizarre Trader or Conjurer's Closet. Bizarre Trader reads, tap to have target player gain control of target creature, artifact, or land you control. That target player can, of course, be us. So when we temporarily gain control of a creature, we can then use Bizarre Trader and target ourselves. And now we permanently control our opponent's creature. Conjurer's Closet reads, at the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control and return it to the battlefield under your control. When you exile a creature in this way or blink them, you become its controller in perpetuity. Along those lines, Insurrection, Molten Primordial, and Conquering Manticore all allow us to steal an opponent's creature or creatures until the end of the turn. Word of Seizing and Zealous Conscripts, on the other hand, steal any type of permanence, so a fun thing to do is to steal an opponent's Planeswalker and then ultimate them, usually sending them to the graveyard. We also run the tried and true Kikijiki Mirror Breaker, which when combined with either Zealous Conscripts or Conquering Manticore, allows us to create an infinite number of hasty creatures. This provides a nice backup plan for victory, if we aren't able to win with Insurrection. With Kari Zev's expertise, we can both gain control of an opponent's creature and play a small spell for free, like Mage Rite Stone. We can also use these threaten effects to claim back Stark in a pinch. Destroy their card with Stark, they gain control of him, but then just hit him with Claim the Firstborn. Tap him to use his ability and voila, he's back under your permanent control once again. We also run Helm of Possession, a four mana artifact that states, you may choose not to untap Helm of Possession during your untap step, and you can spend two generic and tap to sacrifice a creature, gain control of target creature for as long as you control Helm of Possession, and Helm of Possession remains tapped. This allows us to gain control of an opponent's creature, destroy that creature with Stark, and retain control of Stark while doing so. Imagine our opponent has an Inferno Titan and a Grave Titan on the battlefield. Tap Stark and put his ability on the stack, targeting Inferno Titan. In response, tap Helm of Possession, targeting Grave Titan sacrificing Stark as part of the cost. Inferno Titan is destroyed and we steal Grave Titan. We also run Humura, Human Ascendant, a legendary human monk for four generic and two red mana. While Humura can't block, its main purpose is to die and return to the battlefield flipped. It does so as Humura's Essence, a legendary enchantment that reads, Creatures you control get plus two plus two and have flying. And you may spend one red for this creature to get plus one plus zero until end of turn. Bring out Humura and use Stark, Goblin Bombardment, or any of your other sacrifice outlets to flip him into an enchantment as quickly as possible. Then we'll just pump in the red mana to empower our attacking creatures. We also run Perforos, God of the Forge, to pour on the damage. And Worm Coil Engine because, well, yeah, it's Worm Coil Engine. It's excellent. Flame Tongue Kavu works as a good removal spell, dealing four damage to target creature, while Rhyme Scale Dragon and its ability to freeze our opponent's creatures out of the game with ice counters help keep our pathway of attack clear. These powerful effects help complement our Chaos Warp, 
and Fisher, as well as Stark himself. With Rhyme Scale Dragon, you can safely bet we'll be running Snowlands. And with Snowlands, why not add some other snow synergies? Glacial Crevices is an enchantment that allows us to sacrifice one of our snow-covered mountains in a pinch to fog, preventing all combat damage. Scrying Sheets is another snow land that will allow us to keep lands in hand while we often draw gas. Terrain Generator, when combined with Scrying Sheets, means we'll be able to keep pace with green decks. For some added fun, we run Clone Shell. Clone Shell is a 2-2 artifact creature for 5 mana that allows us to look at the top 4 cards of our library and imprint a creature card from among them. When Clone Shell dies, we then get to put the imprinted creature right onto the battlefield. With our numerous sack outlets, we can reliably sneak in some powerful creatures like Worm Coil Engine and Inferno Titan. We can let our opponents swing in and, when the time is right, sacrifice Clone Shell and surprise our opponent with something terrifying. Sneak Attack serves a similar purpose. And with our Scarecrone, we can keep recurring our Clone Shell, while our Nim Death Mantle will help us revive the creatures we lose to Sneak Attack. Sunbird's Invocation, on the other hand, lets us go nuts by casting multiple spells per turn off the top of our deck. With a lot of cards being on the more expensive side, we will often get to dig pretty deep into the deck. And this wouldn't be a control deck without Board Wipe, Mizium Mortars, Star Storm, Blasphemous Act, Chain Reaction, and Sneakily, Insurrection with a Sack Outlet in play, fill this role nicely. One of the deck's weaknesses is card draw. So we run Valakut's Awakening, Mind's Eye, War Room, Dark Steel Pendant, and Reforge the Soul to mitigate that as much as possible. Fire Diamond, Ruby Medallion, Heart of Ramos, Thran Dynamo, Lotus Petal, and Gilded Lotus complement our mana base of mostly snow-covered mountains. An extra planar lens and caged sun are powerful, if obvious, means of doubling our mana. Mono Red has a few blind spots, so for whatever the deck can't handle, there's Tybalt's Trickery, Red's very own counter spell. Planner Portal is also here in order to go find a silver bullet when such a thing is needed. Because we're playing exceedingly fair cards, sometimes the deck can stall out for a little while, but it rewards patience from the player. Being able to time things perfectly is the key to success, and sitting back and biding our time is the best way to play. Maybe we've stalled, or maybe we're just waiting to pounce. Deck list is posted in the description, and it was developed by Justin Joe Vanello. This is a deck Justin has had and developed for over 10 years and it was such an honor to get to spotlight it here on the channel. Justin wanted me to note that my episode with One More Mana discussing the focus of playing against expectations is really what this deck is all about, so I will link that episode in the description as well. This deck is often like the Spanish Inquisition, because no one expects you to sit down with Stark of Wrath and ruin their whole night with Mono Red Control. But now I want to hear from you. What commander deck would you like to see a tech on next? Let me know in the comments below. Special thanks once again to Cubamajigs for sponsoring this video. There's only about a week left in the Kickstarter, so for these resealable card packs, perfect for Cube or Jumpstart or Apotamajigs for Cube or your Commander decks, go to cubes2.com. That's C U B E S 2.com to find out more. Thank you, Cubamajigs, for helping make this a reality. Well, I've shown you my deck list. I'd love to know what all of you are playing. Edgar Markov. Grand Arbiter. Stacks and mass land destruction. Simic value engine with no real win cons. And who's the commander for the Simic deck? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You people are sick. <laughs>